In the previous edition of my beekeeping videos, we did the hive inspection and found that I did have wax moths. And I'm gonna show you today in this episode how I deal with wax moths. Stay tuned. Hello, welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen, another day in my apiary. I was out here yesterday, which was the previous episode. I titled it because I mentioned the subject is I, ha I know some people who almost do beekeeping butt naked, so uh, don't do it butt naked. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll live to regret it. You'll get stung in parts you don't want to get stung in. Anyway. Wax moths, did the inspection yesterday, found I only had one hive. Thought I had four hives earlier in the spring, but turned out it was just robbers, bees coming in, and it was my fault. I take full responsibility and blame for it. And what happened was I would set the feeder out in front of the community feeder out in front of my beehives in my apiary, inviting all of the bees in the area to come and feed. Well, any weak hives that I may have had over the last couple of years, those, once the food ran out, those bees went and became robbers and started going into the other hives and taking the honey. That's what I thought when I saw so much activity going in and out of the hives. I thought, oh, well, I got hives. Well, my bad, I, uh, hesitated at opening the hives and actually doing an inspection but those were actually robbers but I do have one good hive as you seen yesterday uh, it was that rescue hive I took out of the wall of a garage that they were remodeling and rehomed them here I added another brooder a brood chamber to it and in the coming weeks I'm thinking very strongly of adding another brood chamber Reason being is if they can, if I can get enough frames with drawn out comb, they can easily store up enough food for the winter and I don't have to worry about them. I'm not harvesting any honey from them this year. I'm just gonna grow them out. Next year, I'm gonna order two queens. I'm gonna separate those two brood chambers and I'm gonna put a queen excluder in it. I'm gonna drive the queen down to the lower part of the hive and then we'll put the queening excluder in and then what I do is I'll let the worker bees in to take care of what brood is there and I'll go ahead and order two queens and start two new hives and split them that way that way with uh, two new queens from a different bloodline if you will I would just help diversify my thing I'm still learning beekeeping as I go along now, if I really wanted to get serious about beekeeping, I'll go ahead and take the master class and, and attend all the, uh, the skills uh, classes that they have because now I have the time because I'm retired. And beekeeping for me is a hobby, but I really, I really am passionate about saving the pollinators. Even though these are considered invasive species to the United States because they were introduced from Europe, yes, uh, and in Oregon, where I live, they're considered livestock. So we get certain tax benefits for raising some bees because they're classified as a livestock. So enough rambling. We're going to talk about identifying, treating, and get, just get, getting rid of wax moths. You're going to have wax moths regardless unless you have strong hives now the this row of hives i uh i'm going to be putting in storage and i'm going to be treating all the frames and i'll show you in a minute how i treat the frames but i wanted to show you the, the since they were sitting vacant for all season 
it invited the wax moths to come in and lay their eggs and their larvae started growing and eating the wax and even so much as eating the wood yes it can be that bad so my treatment for this is i will you know you can take them place them in plastic garbage bags and stick them in your freezer and freeze them for five days that freeze will kill all the eggs and the larva how i treat it let me show you i just set the frames down that have the larva on it and i feed it to my chickens since this is my chicken yard I let the chickens clean it up, and then once it's cleaned up, I'll go ahead and collect the frames. The freezer that I have resourced from a couple of years past, I think I only paid $50 for it from an estate cleanup. Anyway, I am sticking it up here in my tractor barn, and it's not going to be having food in it, but I'm going to be using it for beekeeping because treating frames at the end of the season especially all of my honey supers i'm freezing the frames for five days and then i'm storing them in this other freezer which actually malfunction it doesn't work and but it gives me an airtight enclosure in which to set the frames preserve them and keep other pests off the frames so they're ready to use next season in the spring season when I start uh, adding honey supers or even more brood chambers it depends on how well my hives grow or if I happen to get a uh, uh, a swarm I've got the beehives ready to go and just home them in the uh, the whole swarm into a beehive so I've got the stock on hand so uh, for you guys, just uh, grab them in a plastic bag, put them in a space uh, in your freezer. If you have a space in your freezer and just freeze them for five days, take them out. Go ahead and keep them in a plastic bag and store them in a nice dry place. Uh, so th these are my advantages that I have on my homestead. Now to clean up these frames before, once I get them frozen, before I put them away in the freezer, <laughs> I take my pressure washer and I a pressure wash all the frames like you see me doing here so that's it that's my treatment for wax moths remove the frames lay them out in the chicken yard let the chickens have their way with them eat all the grubs and get the protein set the frames in the freezer for five days take them out and then pressure wash them let them thoroughly dry and then store them in that old defunct freezer in an airtight container uh, uh, if it's you just store them in plastic bags and maybe a plastic tote but nasty creatures there's nothing you can do we get in the way with uh, uh, not having them well now that i got the freezer full of frames it held exactly three of these honey super frames I'll go ahead and just uh, stockpile my frames, get them uh, covered in plastic, get them protected. So um, I guess that is a treatment for wax moths. Um, a preventative measure for wax moths is they do have, um, you know, once they get into the hives, they have a, uh, a, a, tr a, a medication you can put for your hives that are harmless to the bees, but that's deadly to moths. I'll try to research that and leave a link down below so you guys can purchase it if you need to. But preventative care, I mean, don't leave uh, empty frames and foundation out. Just keep them bagged up, keep them locked away in a nice tight environment. Maybe totes that are well sealed. Uh, that's a good preventative measure until it's time for you to use them because wax mocks are opportunistic they are going to go for that wax and they can destroy already pulled out uh, a comb which is unfortunate because that pulled out comb uh, already it really helps the bees along with their when you add them to your uh, colonies it, 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 it's less work for the bees but unfortunately I have to pressure wash all these and it destroys all the comb all the wax comb but i'm going to try to save up the wax set it aside melt it down make candles out of it we'll see well i'm jerry hansen your host this is pine meadows hobby farm we're a frugal homestead to tie in the cascade ranges 
of the Pacific Northwest. We're located geographically west-southwest of Crater Lake National Park. Yeah, beekeeping, a hobby, and that's all it is right now. Uh, I don't want it to be a serious bus business. I just want it to be a hobby and just uh, provide a little bit of sweet rewards on the homestead. Uh, please stay tuned to more videos. You could do that by subscribing and clicking that bell icon. That alerts you to new videos as I do upload them. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, click that share button. Sharing my videos on your social media platforms helps us out a lot also. Remember, always be safe. Always be kind. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye now. And I'm going to stick them in this freezer.